Hey guys, hope you're doing great. Today I want to speak about guitar and guitar players and how we as fans and listeners develop our taste over the years. So when I was growing up, um, yeah, probably the first thing that I ever heard, some of you obviously know, was um, It Bites and the guitar player Francis Dunnery. And their kind of music style was progressive pop. And the thing that he brought to me wasn't just his playing, like his technical ability was ridiculous, um, was his on-stage performance as well and how he executed that. And it was about melodic content as well, because you can still, I can still remember all the melodies. You know, there was never anything that I didn't go away with thinking all about melody and still those melodies are tattooed deep into your soul, you know? So there's loads, loads of builds and characteristics that create a guitar player. And their style and sound is a massive one. Like the stylistic approach to um, jazz, for example, like Wes Montgomery, I've developed my ear over the years into listening to something that's completely different from what I've ever heard. So jazz is a whole other world of tasteful guitar playing. I'm not on about the traditional kind of jazz, the usual jazz that you, you, you know, you, you've heard on, you know, in, in jazz lounge bars or cafes or something like that on the radio. It's, this is, um, this is like, it's, a, it's an emotion. They're, they're just as emotional as the blues players, like B.B. King and Stevie Ray and all those guys. Just as emotional as the makeup of their guitar playing and their interlocking melodies and the way that they go down in chord progressions. It's kind of like the Carpenters or something would do, or, um, you know, like Abba or, or anything like that that has like a, a beautiful um, voice leading melodic line that's passing through chords and discovering people like Wes Montgomery was just a massive eye-opener into not just guitar playing but everything to do with music so that was a big thing for me um, listening to those kind of players now um, just recently I put a post out saying what's your, um, not your favourite or best or anything like that, but what kind of guitar players gave you a real unearthly feeling like something fucking bizarre is going on here, like something you've never heard before. It's, it's like out of this world playing. Something really strange and bizarre is going on here. And um, probably the first time that I kind of felt that way was with Alan Holdsworth and that wasn't with his other bands this was on his own solo stuff I think it was a live at Yoshi's DVD and some of the stuff that they were playing on that it just made you feel like it was dark but beautiful at the same time really really weird but it was like a whole other landscape of music suddenly came into focus and it was with Alan it's not just his technical ability obviously he's, he's from a different planet but it was his melodic content those little seeds of melody in between that just like oh, just delivered such a sweet emotion so there's a massive difference between that and emotional mel you know melodic playing in guitar and Jeff Beck if we're talking about emotional melodic playing, people like Jeff Beck, they're the kind of gods of this really. They're they're the pioneers, they're the ones who carved the way for guitarists like myself to try and create you know, lead and soaring top lines, voice leading melodic passages and stuff. So that's the kind of taste thing that you kind of develop over time and experience. So Back in the day, when I was like 17, 18, it was um, 
bands like Dream Theater and Planet X and all those kind of ridiculous technical bands and I don't feel um, you know bad for listening to for those guys because they they gave you something else it was there was a massive explosion of fire and um, technical ability and, and youth and rawness that you kind of need when you when you're young basically when you're learning to get to grips with your instrument and that was a that was a great learning curve and then when you get older you can you've got that technical ability there and then you start to delve into more tasteful areas and then execute and inject the technical kind of content into your music and that's I think that's a massive thing with my music that I try to do is just inject this technical stuff here and there just, you know you've, you've got it in the in the bag kind of thing that you can break out any time but it's all about the song it's all about the melody first on bass different styles and genres of guitar playing that's why I don't think you can really have a who's best you can obviously have your favorites and stuff but I think every single guitar player has their own output they have something to say and every listener absorbs that differently as well two people can go to the same show and have a completely different experience so it's entirely up to you what you take from the experience. Also as a guitar player, sometimes you can have really bad nights where things just don't go right, technical issues and all kinds of things go wrong on the stage, but you still deliver the performance. You still execute what you wanted to portray through your music, you know? Even if all the odds are against you and nothing's going to plan, you can still pull off some kind of magic. Some of the best things that I've ever seen is when artists channel into another frequency to manage to pull off some outrageous magic that evening. Guitar is a unique instrument, like everyone is unique, and 
I think everybody is striving for that individuality. When you hear Pink Floyd's, Dave Gilmore's guitar work, you immediately, unmistakably hear his note choice, his sound, his bends, his articulation. So I think it's that instinct for originality of expression is what defines us. See you again.